Welcome back to a special episode of Scene Fight, Fight Scene's Breakdown. I am Chad Vasquez, the head coach of Paxibel Martial Arts. And I'm Pekiti Tersha Kali, weapons instructor, Logan Love. And today we're breaking down the famous alleyway fight scene between legendary pro wrestler Rowdy Roddy Piper and actor Keith David from the cult classic John Carpenter film, They Live. Okay, for those of you that have not seen this film before or have not seen it in theaters like I have, the deal is, is that when Rowdy Roddy Piper has the glasses, he can see the truth of what's out there is that there are people that look human but aren't. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to give it to Keith and go like, yo man, what you think is real is not real. And Keith is being resistant to that. And it kind of goes to show the length people will go through to remain willfully ignorant. Great commentary about society and humanity in general in this fight scene. So let's kick some mass and chew some bubble gum. And we're all out of bubble gum. Stare down by Piper and Keith. Piper telegraphs a punch, <laughs> Keith weaves and comes back. Okay, Keith's like, get your pro wrestling punch out of here, son. Let me show you some real hands. It makes sense why Piper is showing this big, exaggerated punch, right? Remember, he's a professional wrestler and he's bringing that type of artwork into this fight scene. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's usually used for fans in the back to right. see what's going on. So that makes sense. But in real life, you cock back, you show what's going on. Here's a little fight trick. You can tell either a hook or a straight punch is coming by looking at the chest. Do not look at the face. There's, there's nothing to gain there. Eyes here, please. I know a straight punch is coming when the fist itself is coming towards my way and it never disappears. I know a hook is coming, for example, when there's chest exposure. So what Logan's showing is to the viewer here, straight punch, the fist is simply, it hasn't disappeared. It's coming straight towards you. A hook, there's chest exposure. So when the hand moves out and it's open chest, there's a looping punch coming your way. That's what Piper did. He cocks back, shows the chest here, which allows Keith to dodge it. To solve this problem in combat, your hands generally stay in front of you. From here, it's why you want to have small, precise movement, not always large ones. Although, let's be honest, in combat, things get exhausting, so you'll get these type of movements, even at a professional level. But from here, if I was just doing a light shadow box with my partner Logan here, here my movements are tight. I'm not exaggerating unless I'm setting up with probably another weapon, another punch, or fake and fainting to misdirect them. And in fact, that's how you help solve this problem if you're fighting a good fighter who knows how to read your body in combat using feints and fakes to misdirect him to help you sneak in a strike. Now Keith telegraphed a little bit, Piper Dodge respond back with his combination. They're letting each other get up because they're trying to figure out if, are they still fighting or talking it out. You see how Piper's smacking the, hand, the punch away? That's parrying and there's a reason to it. As we move forward, Piper is telling Keith, look, I don't want to fight you, man. And he's easily smacking away Keith's punches, his jab. That's referred to as parrying. It's a very lazy form of it, but it's called parrying in, let's say, boxing and also in mixed martial arts. Why was he parrying so easily? Well, if you look, Keith is throwing from, from a distance. Distance does affect timing, which is why Piper has good timing because of the range. So as Keith's throwing these lazy jabs here, he's not stepping in. He's not committing. And he keeps doing the same movement. Or Piper's just easily just smacking away. Smacking away, it's just parrying. There's parrying, there's no commitment there. If Keith was really trying to land those jabs, fake and faints to misdirect Piper. If Logan does a quick figure and I, I miss my, my, uh, my parry, he can then follow up with a punch. Second, he wasn't stepping in, right? Not, not hitting Logan, but going over his shoulder here. If I'm committing a jab, I wanna move in and commit to that movement, not just that's more for just maybe harassing the guard, range, not really trying to do damage, right? It depends on what your footwork is doing. So that's why Piper was just easily moving the hands and what's called parrying. Piper's committed to making Keith wear the glasses, but Keith comes back with a back fist. And it looks like Keith is elbowing, which in a street fight makes sense. If you go too much with the fist, you could 
possibly break your hands. So forms and elbows is smart. And if you're going to strike someone. Get up, Rowdy. Get up, man. All right, so Keith's trying to be a friend here, right? He's giving me a hand out. So I look, all right, okay, are we done here? Do you know that I don't want to wear his glasses? Piper's like, listen, but then Keith, oh. no, Keith, Keith's being a little dirty here. Now right? <laughs> he's being, you know, that wasn't cool. Low blow by Piper, stopped by Keith, and headbutt by Piper. Funny, fun fact there, South Park recreated this fight between Timmy and Jimmy. Yeah, it's called the cripple fight. Not our words, but Google it. Cripple fight, South Park. It's hilarious. Hilarious and wrong. It's very wrong. With that being said, Piper did opportunity just not to hit him in the crotch or headbutt him, but to go for a takedown given the legs were right in front of him. And why am I suggesting this? What does Piper want? He wants to help, I would assume, a friend or a guy he's friendly with mm -hmm. to wear glasses so he can see aliens just like Piper. Not to break him physically. So... If that's your goal, maybe grappling's more your friend here than striking. Yeah, and the reason why is because, especially with weapons involved, like most striking arts and certainly weapons are, are binary. Either you're not gonna hurt the person at all or you're gonna severely hurt them. Whereas, Chad, I think you'd agree, grappling is much more like a thermostat. You can hurt them a little bit or you can hurt them a lot. And that's one of the beautiful things about grappling arts. It's almost like a thermostat, unlike the binary nature of striking arts. So instead of just kind of trying to hit the crotch right away, we could do a more humane method here and just grapple and bring our partner down to the floor using a low single. From here, since my head is inside the legs, my hand connecting to the ankle, the outside hand is probably the best grip. If my head's outside, inside grip. Head inside, outside grip. From here, I catch the ankle, keeping the elbow down, staying low. The opposite leg, I post up for support for mobility. My head goes inside the knee, pushing it so I can collapse Logan. Looks like this. Once the takedown's complete, you want to get to your feet, holding on to the ankle. You don't want this person to stand up. If they try, we can reset them down with grips, moving the feet so you don't get kicked and have an angle of attack. Now. Piper wants to simply make Keith wear glasses, not beat the crap out of him. Although his attentions don't, are not clear because he does beat the crap out of Keith. What we can do instead is pin legs, not have free hands. If I do try to get punched, I can control the hands very quickly, not getting hit. Now, could I punch back? Sure, but Piper's trying to make his friend here wear glasses. So probably a more reasonable way of doing this is trying to get to mount. There's different ways of getting to the mount. Some freestyling here, if you will. As I'm controlling the hands, paying them, I can use good leg work to smoothly go into mount. From here, I can stop punches, and as I'm pinning the hands, I can, one hand at a time, get these shades on the guy I'm trying to have see aliens with. And looking great. Put them on. Uh, Drops it. He's trying to stomp on the boxes. Ooh, don't stomp him. No. Oh, he faked him. Keith, no, Keith, Keith's doing some dirty stuff here. You know what? Chad likes it. <laughs> Chad likes it. Do you want okay. it? Okay. All right. We're still talking about the fight, right? No, he's walking away. He's like, look, leave, leave it alone. Leave it alone. I don't want any glasses. Pipe's like, no, man. Charges him. Brings Keith down to the ground. Picks him back up, okay? Piper's punching, punching. Let's move him, all right? Have him against the wall, which is not a bad idea. And Keith puts him in a headlock. Fellas, if you guys ever get to a street fight, and particularly ones who don't know how to fight, you all are gonna do this. You guys are all gonna headlock each other, and this is very common between guys who fight. It's very instinctual. And Piper responds back with a backdrop. And that makes sense. Look, if you're fighting a really strong guy and you're holding him to his head and... Mm -hmm. You're not doing anything with it. A big guy can grab your waist and lift you up and slam you. And dude, that, that could be bad for you if your head hits the, the concrete. What Keith could have done that was better was use the headlock and pull the man down to the ground so you don't get slammed. Keith gets a headlock. In street fighting, guys 
do this all the time. If you haven't trained before, here's what's gonna happen. You're talking smack, all right? Maybe you guys are drunk, whatever. You're about to throw punches. In your exchange of punches, you realize, oh my God, I don't wanna get knocked out. So what you guys do is as you guys start swinging, you do this all the time. Keith instinctively does this. This is this makes sense, actually. It's not the best technique for full on combat, but it makes sense. If you control the head, the body follows. Now Keith just holds it, doesn't really do anything, which leads to him getting slammed by Piper. What could Keith have done better? From his position, he could have improved it by involving the arm, especially if my opponent is using his hands to try to grab at my wrist and try to push me away. The arm is there, so we can find it very easily. Now, we're gonna show a sag headlock takedown. From here, if I have this, watch how I take my hips and bring it under Logan. The idea is I'm gonna sit down underneath my opponent as I pull his head down. So watch everyone. As I step, my hip comes underneath my partner and I bring him down. From here, you will have to quickly scramble to a pin of some type to not get countered. That's a much better way of using a headlock in order to take the guy you're fighting to the ground and not get picked up and slammed on your head as Keith learned the hard way. So Piper is pushing Keith's face off, but Keith responds by biting his hand. Uh. At this point of the fight, I'm not surprised by Keith. All right, he's biting very dirty. And, and not, not just like, I guess, in ethics of fighting, but it's just the environment. It's dirty. Yeah, they're in the alleyway. Dirty. What could have Piper done better in not getting bitten and reversing the situation, which would allow him to get the glasses on Keith sooner? Let's show you. Piper was pushing, and you can see it, everyone. The hand is right in front of Logan's face, right? Front in front of his mouth, he can bite. So instead, if he has to push against this guy's face, create frames and more to the jawline or neck, not in front of the face, here. Now, Keith wasn't really doing anything with his legs, he was just sitting down. So let's reverse him using my own legs as I push the head away. I will circle and start pushing and work to my knees. It will put Piper in this situation. Now, I'm not saying he would let go. He probably would hold very tightly. In fact, when I train beginners who are new in grappling, they start sparring, a lot of them do this. It's instinct. Okay, how do we solve this problem? Here's one strategy. My right arm blocks the hip. My left arm goes around the forehead to start stretching Logan's neck back. One thing I want to do is I don't want Logan to roll me over. So if Logan tries that, do you know Logan? My elbow, my weight should stop that. Next, I'm going to straighten out his back to weaken his grip. Logan, hold tight and hard. From here, being really light here, I start stretching out Logan. As I stretch out Logan, using my stomach, my forearm, and my elbow to block his hip, I make room for my hand. I get a backhand frame to my forehead, lift the elbow, and slide my head out. From here, I have different options for pinning. I could go to what's called a side control, a pin right here. If Logan turns away, I could go into a seatbelt and create a back control. Not bad for putting glasses on. Or I can slide into mount, controlling the hands, stopping myself from getting punched, and also looking to put those damn glasses on. Yeah, and Piper's like, why I do that? Yeah, he's like holding his hand. Okay, gets punched by Keith. Okay, Piper just flips Keith and Right. He's now <laughs> head slamming him. <laughs> Where are the glasses? I think that would be a fight ender, right? If you're slamming a guy's head, yeah, that's, that's a fight that's ender. That's dangerous. Don't, don't do that. And now he's eye gouging him. I don't know how that helps. He can't see anything now, if that works. Keith is now kneeing Piper in the crotch. And Piper's just there taking it. <laughs> like, after the first strike, I think just watching people learn grappling from my experience as a teacher, people instinctively have it in their nature to, to push and kick away with their legs. Right. Especially if you're being hit multiple times in the crotch. So in case you didn't know that about yourself, if you're getting hit multiple times in your crotch, you will instinctively try to kick away with your legs. So that doesn't make too much sense. Piper is going for head slams by grabbing the shirt or clothing of Keith and lifting and slamming. Uh, Keith, in return, does knees to the crotch. Both can be solved the same way, by using your damn legs. In jiu-jitsu, we call that using the guard. For example, I'm Piper, 
I'm grabbing the jacket of Keith here, and I'm slamming my partner. Logan will show, first, he can quickly use his hands by blocking me, maintaining space. So I don't close this gap that you see. Next, he'll perform a maneuver called shrimping, where he turns his hips and moves his butt away, allowing his two knees to come up and block me. Now, if I am still holding on to the jacket and throwing my partner here, his legs can slowly get in front of us and really start challenging my arms and grips. From here, there's a lot Logan can do, because the reality is this. Once those knees get between you and the guy you're fighting, this guy right here can start attacking with strikes, with submissions, strangles, or joint locks, or just kick me off and start standing up. Second scenario, where there's this awkward position where Keith is just kneeing Piper in the crotch. Piper could do the same thing, blocking the chest, shrimping out, and bring the knees back inside to start kicking off the guys attacking him. They both had the same solution. It's called the guard. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Piper does a little technique there where he trips him by the ankle. So it's actually some technique there a little bit. There's some logic there, I see. Oh, weapons. Okay, so it looks like Piper's grabbing a two by four. Here, it looks like Piper's just using it like a baseball bat. Not really the best way to do it because it's not weighted properly. It's also not shaped well to hold in the hand that way. I would probably choke up on it. I would have it in two hands, use it more like a thrusting weapon, or even as a wrestler, you could use it as a grappling weapon. It's not the best, but I can see why he would use this. Okay, it looks like Keith grabbed a bottle. He's like, what, son? Hopefully yeah. that wasn't his car. Yeah, you can probably apologize, dude. I was kind of a little overboard there. <laughs> Here, he smashed it against the car. Um, I can see that happening when you're smashing a bottle and it basically destroys the weapon that you wanna have. And that's why if and when a bottle's involved, you need to be very, very careful. Quick story, uh, when I was younger and I used to go to clubs, there was actually a real fight where a bottle was involved and the guy smashed it over the guy's head. First of all, both of them got injured, but a girl that was like 10 feet away got a piece of glass in her eye. So. Glass is a very, very dangerous weapon. I would be very careful. Here, Keith smashed it against the car and the entire thing broke, not in the way he wanted. I think that's very realistic. I would not take a chance breaking a bottle against anything because it could easily smash in your own hand and then you don't get to use your dominant weapon hand. I would never do that myself. So, weapons time. Piper got his hands on a two by four. Not the best weapon, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. He actually held it kind of like a baseball bat and he was swinging it wildly. So he's using it as a slashing weapon. I would say a better idea would be use it as a thrusting weapon and or as a grappling weapon. Let's talk about that. As a thrusting weapon, I would have it here. And again, I'm actually not gonna go through chat. I'm gonna go in front of chat. I would go like this. I would do this type of motion. And I can also hit up and hit in. And again, by having this, I have greater control of the weapon versus the baseball grip, where again, it's very forward weighted, I have very little control, and I can only use it one way, as a slashing weapon. This way, I can use it as a thrusting weapon and as a slashing weapon. So I get two uses out of it. In fact, I can get three uses out of it. Now, as we saw in Raging Fire, I can also use the weapon as a grappling weapon. Normally, I would be going into Chad's trachea, but because our insurance premium is not paid up, I'm putting it into his chest. I'm gonna put my knee into his back, and I'm gonna pull back this way. If I had the opportunity to get a two by four, that's probably how I would use it versus how Piper used it in this scene. So Logan, I'm sure a lot of people are asking this question here. What are some smart defensive tactics in this situation? Well, actually, I'm gonna take a cue from my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor and I'm gonna to wanna to close the distance. I don't wanna be in the perimeter sure. of the outside of the stick. So I'm gonna immediately come in and try to close the distance. So that's my Number one, instinct. As soon as I see a weapon of this length, I want to close the distance. Okay, a follow up to that. The attack of thrusting, sure. what are your thoughts? Honestly, if it was a thrusting weapon, I would do the exact same thing. I want, want to parry it, so he comes in here, parry it, come in and get in as close as possible to minimize the damage to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as blunt weapons go, this is pretty much as blunt as you can get. It's gonna hurt a little bit if I do a block, so if it comes in, I do a, a, a parry but guaranteed that's not gonna bother me as much as if it was an edge weapon. Moreover, with adrenaline, I wouldn't feel it. My main goal is to not get hurt more. I wanna really come in and close that distance. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Here, we have a beer bottle. I wouldn't want to use this unless I absolutely had to. I probably wouldn't want to risk smashing it on his head. Why? I don't want to get a piece of glass in my eye. I don't want to get a piece of glass on me. So how would I use such a thing? Again, I would probably use it as a thrusting weapon. And if I manage to get really close, then I can use it as a bludgeoning tool here, hoping it doesn't break. But really, I would want to keep smashing it into the person's face in a way that I won't likely get a shard in my eye or in my face. Here, Gravity is bringing down all those shards on both of us. Here, gravity is bringing the shards down. Ideally, I don't want it to smash and come into my eye. I want to basically use this as any other blunt object, not as a sharp object. Sharp object meaning exactly as he did it, smashing it against here, hoping he gets a nice serration so he can make it into a stabbing weapon. There are plenty of people that will tell you, if you smash a glass bottle, the chance of you cutting your own hand, incredibly high not an additional risk I want to take if it's a life and death fighting situation. Here, it's not a life and death fighting situation. I would never have picked up the bottle in the first place. Why? Because I am a good friend. All right, Logan, uh, what's your weapon of choice? Well, I would drink the beer, right? And after I'm done drinking the beer, both as the defender and as the attacker, I'd probably want the two by four. Neither one is a great weapon, but this allows me to be dangerous without worrying about my own safety. Here, I would be worrying about my own safety with glass weapon. All right, Keith is is uh, now smack. Oh, he's he's just bitch slapping. He's bitch slapping and pimp smack. He's doing two. There's two. <laughs> there's two forms to it. Okay, he took the back. Okay, Piper's holding Keith, but uh, the in way in the way he's holding Keith, there's no control of the hips, so Keith could just circle out. But instead, he foot stomps, okay. picks him up, and slams Piper, which is dangerous, man. I mean, slamming is one way of getting fights to the ground, but it's also doing damage too. Serious damage. So Piper is not moving for good reason. As we move forward in the scene, we see Piper holding Keith in a standing position from the back in, I would say, a low percentage way. What do I mean? We see Piper catch a punch and put Keith into this situation. Now, Keith gets out by doing a foot stop, right? Ow, his butt goes behind his attacker, and he gets two grips to lift the guy up, Piper, and slamming him. Why is this low percentage? From here, both guys are wearing boots, so when he does do a foot stomp there, I don't really know how well Piper can feel that. So much pain for him to go out and step back, I don't really see that, given the footwear. Two, he doesn't have to do it. He doesn't need a foot stomp. He could just move his butt behind the guy because there's nothing controlling his hips. Doesn't make sense. Okay, so what'd be a faster answer for Keith? From here, he has the right idea. Move the hips, because nothing stops it. And now, turn it in to a body lock. So he has the right idea, getting grip on the hip, but instead of grabbing the knee, an easier way is just lock the body lock here and let your legs do the work instead of your upper body. As you hold, there's ways where I can get a good position, and lift the guy, slamming him, controlling him, and it's less work. That's a more high percentage, realistic way of addressing that situation. Next question, where are foot stomps in fighting? You see it used in mixed martial arts sometimes, but that makes sense because the athletes are not wearing shoes. They're barefoot. So a heel to the knuckles does make sense. A situation is in which the athletes, the fighters, are pinning each other against a cage, using foot stomps to collect points and harassing the legs here. As legs move, this sets up ways of trying to get the feet over under for trips. Keith has pinned the glasses, and at least he's doing one polite thing. He's giving them back. Always right? polite, always polite. It's time to go home. Yep. I feel he's gonna come back up. What are you doing, Rowdy? Let's see it. All right, Piper's like, no, he has to see. He has you to have to wear his glasses. You know, and psychologically, you understand, you don't want to know the truth sometimes. I like to live in blissful ignorance whenever possible. He's like, damn, bro, this is a long fight. I that's thought we were doing 20 seconds. That's how I wake up every morning. That's one thing that's real in a fight, is exhaustion. Right. Ooh. And he gets a body lock, right. picks up Keith, Ooh. and slams him. That's a real move. You do see it in some combat sports like Greco-Roman wrestling. Uh -huh. Not too often. It's not the most high percentage thing you can get. And that's the finishing move. Pepper has his, his pin position, right? One, two, three. Glasses on, baby. 
You know, get your ass off and look at this. That's, that's what Piper's talking about. I'm done, I'm done, don't mess with you. There you go. Look at that. He's like, look, look. And then now he sees some skull alien people. Ugh. That's when you need some yeah. moisturizer. Keep this. He's like, what? For this final exchange, Piper attacks Keith while he is taking a break on the wall there. Piper gets underneath Keith and gets this type of bylock, rotating Logan, showing the crowd. That's what I mean here. From here, he does a lift and a slam, and you do see it within the combat sport of, let's say, Greco-Roman wrestling and maybe other wrestling arts as well. What's a little more efficient way of going about that? Let the legs do the work. Piper could engage Keith chest-chest against the wall, holding him like so, or hands together around the waist like so. So the upper body can't move too much. Next, the legs can hook around to the ankle and pull in. Now, for some of you that are gonna say, well, isn't the wall in the way? Good question. We're gonna have to circle the guy to an open space to create the collapse. Look something like this. Hook, turning, as I pull, we take the partner down. I base my hands on the floor to protect my partner. In reality, I would come crashing down with body weight. That's a more effective move that Piper could have done instead of just slamming his friend into concrete. But we get it. Piper is a professional wrestler. You want to make the scene look really cool and exciting in the way that he knows best. So we thank you, Rowdy. What this fight scene is really is a pro wrestling match right. in a movie, right? It makes sense. You have. Piper, you're one of the greats. With that said, we do see some realism with real factors like fatigue sure. in a fight, uh, instinct of headlocks, biting, eye gouging. But then we obviously see a massive exaggeration as what pro wrestling is, respectively. So in my opinion, I give this fight scene a C minus. There's obviously exposition involved, right? They wanted to make this a long scene to show the willful ignorance of Keith. We get that. Also, in the real world, Piper wanted to show off his skill. So instead of a 22 second fight scene, which is probably what it would be like in real life, it became a five minute thing. We understand all that. Having said all of this, look, we've done a lot of films. We've seen a lot of things happen. The quality of movie fights has gotten better. So broadly speaking, a C minus is fair.